Hey there guys and welcome along inside the arcade. So today I'm going to be showing you how to set up all of your peripherals inside the change machine. So to start with we're going to need a 12 volt power supply. This is a 12 volt power supply that runs from a mains lead. So you should just be able to hook in your green and yellow into the ground your blue into the neutral and your brown into the live. Now if you used to turn this on right now, uh, it would be absolutely fine. Uh, however, you shouldn't really do it because you've got no output power. Um, however, what we're gonna do now is set up the rest of the peripherals. So once we've wired in the mains wire into the power supply, we're just gonna put this aside for now because we're not gonna need it just at this very moment. We're gonna be using our coin mech. This is a cheap, Chinese coin mech. It's quite useful actually. It's, it's very good for homebrew arcade machines as it allows you to program in whatever coin, whatever currency or, or tokens uh, that you like. It runs very easily off of a 12 volt power supply and it has a simple pulse line which delivers the amount of pulses per coin. So it's very useful if you want to use multiple denominations and you could have, for example, a pound delivering 10 pulses and five pulses for a 50p, for example, um, or one pulse for a 50p and two pulses for a pound. The possibilities are quite endless, really, in terms of the amount of configuration you can do with these. Um, they're not the best in terms of security, uh, but if you're just using it for your homebrew arcade machines, then they are perfect. So with your Chinese coin mech, you'll notice that it comes with a set of wires on the back. One red, one black, one white, and two greys. We're not going to worry about the greys for now, because this is for controlling meters. But the ones that we do want to worry about are the black, the red, and the white. The black and red are quite clearly the 12 volt and the ground. And the white is the pulse line, which we're going to hook up a little bit later on. We're also going to be using a relay. So every time that the change machine detects a pulse, it's going to turn the relay on, which in turn turns on the hopper. This is just a standard four module relay. And you're going to want to get one that has pin outputs for an Arduino. So we've got a VCC, which is our five volt line, a ground, and then our signal pins. And the signal pins basically just tell the relay when to turn on and when to turn off. Okay, so as well as all this, we're going to need a hopper to pay out our coins. Now, this is just a standard Suzo Hap MK2 cube hopper. This runs very easily off of a 12 volt power supply or a 24 volt power supply. But we have a 12 volt power supply which controls our coin mech. So we're just going to run the 12 volt power supply to the hopper. We're not going to want to directly hook up the 12 volt power supply to the hopper. What we're going to want to do is make a connection between the relay here and the hopper because we only want it turning on when we want it to. If you were to put the 12 volt power supply and the ground onto this hopper right now, it would just spin continuously. And we're going to want a liquid crystal display. Now, this is a handy little display that I've used on a variety of different projects over the years. I've never changed from this design because it's just so versatile. It has four pins on the side here, which basically means that you can just run a voltage and a ground and uh, run your two signal wires from the Arduino. And it, it's so easy to configure this um, and basically write what you would like to write. So we're gonna to wanna to buy a YW Robot Arduino LCM1602 IIC version two. And I find this to be the most versatile and cost-effective display unit that you can get for this project. Okay, so we're not gonna hook anything up to the Arduino just yet. We're gonna sort out our power. So again, make sure that the power supply is turned off at this point. You do not want to be dealing with screwdrivers and metal and electric at the same time. Okay, so I have installed a black, a red, and a green wire onto a pin. This is a five pin connection. And I mean, you can use a four pin or anything like that. But the main things that you want to look at is the direction and the wiring that I've 
put in in the order that I've put in. Now your wiring may be different. You'll need to check the schematics on the particular hopper that you have to find the pin output that you need. You can see that the ground is on pin nine, the 12 volt is on pin eight, the 24 volt is on pin seven, which we're not gonna use at all. And the sensor pin, which is probably one of the most important ones that we're gonna hook up, is on pin six. I choose to make a more permanent fixture and it also allows me to pull the plugs in and out as necessary. So we're gonna want a good length of wire on here. This is just to allow flexibility. We can always trim this down later. My green wire is the longest and we've got obviously our red and our black wire and you're just gonna to wanna to trim the ends off of those. So to make sure that we've got all of our wires out the way what for what we need to do, I'm just gonna plug this in here. Again, just making sure that the ground is in the bottom pin there, ground pin nine. And once we have got all those out the way, we're gonna to want to lose the green wire. That's not needed just this very minute. And we're just gonna be dealing with the red and the black. Now, hooking up a relay can be a little bit daunting for some people. It is a little bit more complicated than, say, hooking up a 12 volt power supply straight to the hopper itself. But the first thing that we're going to want to do is hook our black wire into the power supply. Make sure that you install it into the voltage negative sign or anything that says GND. OK, so right here on the fourth nodule here, it's got minus voltage. So I'm just going to undo the screw there and simply place the ground voltage wire underneath and screw it back up. And as you can see, that's not going anywhere. And remember, when we're dealing with electrics like this, you want to be as safe as possible. So with the red wire that is coming directly from the hopper, we want to use and hook into our relay. I'm just twisting the wires up here. And we're gonna to wanna to put this in relay one, which is labeled K1. And we're gonna to wanna to place that inside the middle. We're gonna to wanna to unscrew these screws to allow a flush fit. And we want to install this wire that's coming straight from the hopper into the middle. And once we've put it in, obviously we want to ensure that that screw is tight so that again, this doesn't come out. And I've also got another length of wire here. I'm using red again because we're dealing with the voltage. And this wire we're gonna to wanna to install from the relay to the power supply. So again, we're gonna put one end into this pin here. and tighten up. And then once that's installed on that side and these are nice and tight, and you're gonna take the red wire that we've just installed into the screw one on the relay and install it on the, the plus voltage screw there. Now I like to keep these in situ with each other. So we're gonna be using the other half of the power supply as well. So we've got two minus voltages and two plus voltages. So if you had four screws, I'd be using plus voltage to minus voltage, plus voltage to minus voltage. So you, you keep them together like that. So again, we're just going to unscrew that part of the power supply. Again, make sure it's plus voltage. Just hook it underneath the screw there and tighten the screw. Again, you want to make sure that this is a very tight and secure fit. Okay, so we have our hopper connected to the power. Now we're gonna to wanna to do exactly the same with the coin mech, except for this time, we don't need a relay. As we're gonna be powering the coin mech, the whole time that the change machine is turned on. So although this may look like a jumble of wires, I've actually hooked the plus and minus voltage wires into a connector block and added on some extra wire with the end here, just to give us a little bit more room to play with. And we're gonna hook this end straight in to the power supply. Okay, so we've got our plus and minus wires there. 
and they are going to hook into the plus and minus voltage lines on the power supply respectively. So again, we just unscrew the screws on the power supply and whichever wire you're using for the negative goes again in the minus voltage and the plus voltage goes to the plus voltage. Again, make sure these are nice and tight and that they're not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so that is the two peripherals that we're gonna be using all hooked up to a power supply. So at this point, I'm now going to turn on the power to the power supply to ensure that the coin mech, at the very least, is running correctly. And as you can see, the coin mech has turned on. Now, I'm not gonna go through how to set up the coin mech in this video. There is another video up here that will show you how to program your coin mech. And as you can possibly hear, the hopper hasn't turned on at this point, so we know that the relay is installed correctly. So this is a bit crude, but I've got something here. Um, it's an old change pot that I've got, and I'm just gonna put the coin mech in like that so it sits um, at the correct angle whilst we're programming the Arduino. Okay, at this point, I would now hook up your Arduino. And if you need any help setting up your Arduino for the first time, there is a help video up there. So I've hooked up my Arduino into the computer. And as you can see, we've got the green and the orange lights all set up there. Now what you're gonna to wanna to do is copy and paste the code that I have included in the description. So once you've done that, that should all be in there like that. Include wire.h should be your first line. And then you should have four closing brackets at the bottom. Don't worry about anything within the code environment just yet. Everything should work exactly as it needs to with the instructions that I'm gonna give you for the pinouts on the Arduino. So once we've done that, we're just gonna to wanna to hit upload and that will upload the sketch to the Arduino. So that's uploaded correctly. Now what we're gonna to wanna to do is hook up our display. Okay, so I've got my display unit here. This is gonna be the first part that I'm going to hook up. And we're gonna to wanna to put in the jumper wires into the four pins on the back, like so. You'll notice on the display unit, it's got GND, which is ground, VCC, which is the plus voltage, SDA and SCL, which is the controller for the display itself. So I've got my blue and my purple wires set up for my ground and my voltage. Ground is my blue wire, so I'm just gonna to wanna to put that straight into the ground on the Arduino. And then the plus five voltage is gonna go through to the plus five voltage on the Arduino. The SDA is gonna go into A4 on the Arduino, which is just down the bottom here and it's called analog in, A4. And the SCL wire is gonna go wanna go into A5. So if you uploaded your sketch and then added in the wire, you will notice that it just comes up with white lines on here. And this is because it updates the display every time the Arduino sends a display message. So at the moment, the Arduino already sent the display message before we got a chance to hook it up. So if we just hit the reset button on the Arduino, you'll notice that it comes up with what we want to see. So now we know that we're ready to hook up the rest of our peripherals. So the green wire that I've got running directly from the hopper sensor pin is gonna to want to go straight into pin 10. The coin mech sensor pin, which is running on this white wire outside the back of the coin mech, I've just hooked onto an extra jumper pin, and we're gonna to wanna to put that into pin nine. So we're almost done. All we need to do now is hook up our relay. Now again, all the relay code is all within the environment already, so it's just a simple case of hooking up a ground of voltage and a signal. So you may be thinking that the ground and the voltage on here is a little bit weird because basically you're getting your, volt, your 12 volts already from the power supply. This is just a switch that turns the voltage on and off. 
this is the voltage that's going to power the microcontrollers to actually turn the switch on and off. I've got another set of jumper leads here, black, brown and red. And on our relay, we're going to want to put black on ground, red on voltage and the brown on IN1. Now remember I said that we're using K1 on this side for our wiring with the 12 volt. So we're going to want to use IN1 on this side to deliver the signal to K1. And now once our pins are on that side of the relay, we then just want to put in the black into ground on the Arduino, the red into the three and a half volts on the Arduino, and the brown wire, which I had it in one, goes into pin number eight. So once you've followed all of these steps, you should technically have a working change machine. The one thing that we got to do now is test it. Okay, so our change machine is gonna be running on pound coins at the moment. I filled a couple of 10 P's in here, and I've got a cup there for the excess that comes out. So the way that I've set this up is that it's going to deliver one coin for one pulse. So a pound coin is gonna release 10 pulses to the Arduino, and that's gonna convert it to 10 coins coming out from the hopper. The green wire on the hopper counts how many times a coin has passed out of the hopper. So it should automatically know when to shut off once 10 coins has passed through it. So if you was to put in a 20 pence, it will deliver two pulses from the coin mech to the Arduino, and it will deliver two coins and shut off the hopper once two pulses have been made from the hopper sensor pin. Okay, so I'm gonna put a pound coin in here and see what happens. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Perfect. And let's just try again to make sure that's not a fluke. Okay, <laughs> I kind of missed the bucket there, but two, four, six, eight, ten again. Perfect. Right, well, now all we need to do is install that into the change machine.